We thank you for your grace, for your mercy, and for your love. I thank you for this precious moment you have given to us. To eat at your table. You are gracious, you are kind, and wonderful. We love you with all our hearts and we appreciate you. We thank you for your word. Your word has blessed us. You set your word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. As I bring forth your word to your children, I pray that through the power of your word, you will answer their prayer. You will impart spiritual wisdom. Your glory will be manifested in their lives in increasing measure. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise God. Now, I've been teaching about faith, so uh, uh, my, my, the topic of my teaching today is how to make your faith work. Okay? I'm still teaching about faith. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Start from Hebrews chapter 11. I will not, I will not read the whole chapter because of time. I will read a few portions to help stir your faith as well as enlighten you. But the possibility is given to us in God's word in our life of faith. You know, last Sunday I, I told you that the possibilities are endless. Jesus said that if you can believe all things are possible to him that believes. And we said, what do you believe? The what? And that you believe with your heart. Okay. So look at that. With that in mind, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. He said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen which means the evidence of unseen realities, all right? And it says, by it, the elders obtained a good report, which means if we are going to obtain it, he's talking about, he's not talking about the, the gray hair, air-headed people. He's referring to those that went ahead of us, the elders, Abraham, Noah, you see, Moses. So it says, by it, the elders obtain a good report, which means if you're going to obtain a good report from God, a testimony, he says, is going to be by faith. Then he says in verse 3, by faith, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So this world, world that we see, it was constructed by the Word of God. The Word of God constructed this work. Now go to Hebrews chapter 5 for a second. Hebrews 5. No, no, verse 5, sorry. Verse 5. Pay attention to these things. They will bless you. It says, By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before he was his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. By faith, Enoch was translated. This man, death had no power over him. He never went to the grave. He said, by faith, God took him. There are three people that never died and left the earth. Okay. One was Elijah, was taken up by the chariot. And Jesus, who levitated, gave final instruction to the disciples. And then he lifted. They've watched him leave. I showed that to you last time when I was talking about the power of his resurrection. And now Enoch, he said, by faith, the man left. He never went to the grave. The verse 6 says, without faith, 
It is impossible to please God, not without money, not without the Holy Spirit. These are all important because the Word of God tells us they are. But it says without faith, it is impossible because it takes faith to appropriate all of these things. Righteousness. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. Then look at verse 8. By faith, Abraham. Look at it. By faith, Abraham. When he was called to go out of a into a place that he should, which he should after receive as an inheritance, obeyed and went out not knowing where he went. God had a plan for this man. God wanted to bless this man. But his blessing was based on his obedience to a divine instruction. So he went out. You see, it, it didn't make sense to his mind. For you to walk out of your house not knowing where you're going. You don't have a specific location given to you. This is where you're going. You are instructed, move out of your house. And he did. He simply honored God's word and he walked out. Because his blessing was wrapped up in the instruction. When God instructs you to do something, you don't need to figure out. God always has a plan in mind. He doesn't always unfold the plan to us. He's looking at your obedience. Are you swift to obey? Are you swift to obey a divine instruction? So, and, and he simply obeyed and walked. And God's plan was that this man was going to inherit a land he had set him to. Because when you study the book of Genesis, one day God called Abraham out of the tent and he told him to lift his hands toward the, the sky. And he said he instructed him to look east, west, north, south. And God said to him, all this land that you see, as far as you can see, he says, I have given it to you. But God didn't reveal the plan to him in the beginning. Many people miss out on the blessing of God. Because they want to use their intellectual mind to figure things out. You see, what does this teach us? Your blessing is in His Word. You don't need to figure out how the blessing will navigate to you. Just do what God has said. That's what faith is. Acting on the Word. Actually, so this translation, maybe we should look at it quicker then. Uh, of James chapter 1. Verse 25. Okay. The new century version. The new century version. It says two. Look at it. Verse 22. Look at it. It says two. What God's teaching say. When you only listen and do nothing, you are fooling yourselves. Those who hear God's teaching and do nothing are like people who look at themselves in a the mirror. They see their faces and then go away and quickly forget what they look like. But the truly happy people are those who carefully study God's perfect law that makes people free. And they continue to study. They do not forget what they had, but they obey what God's teaching say. Those who do that, this will be happening. And they will be, the, the other translation says, they will be blessed. Okay, let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 11. Okay. Enoch left, he never died because of faith, by faith. In the book of Hebrews 11, 11, look at that. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. This was a woman who was very old and she was past the age of childbearing. But the Bible says, by faith, the woman gave birth to a child. She was past, at best, according to medical science, she could not produce. In one place, 
The Bible says that Abraham, being not weak in faith, considered not his body now dead, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb, which means this woman's womb was dead. Naturally impossible to give birth to a child. But this is by faith. The woman gave birth to a child. Look at verse 24. Verse 24. Bible says, by faith Moses, when he had come to years, had come of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ's greater riches. This man had opportunities. He was raised in Pharaoh's house. Money was not a problem. Everyone in Egypt respected their family. In fact, you see, Egypt was the one power at that time. And everyone respected Pharaoh. They feared him. But Moses looked at the treasures in Egypt. He saw they were for a moment. The Bible tells us that this one will pass away. Only the word of God will last forever. Amen. We need to function with that consciousness. Only God's word will last. He said everything else will pass away. Where are the fellows of old? The people that threatened the economies of the nations, where are they now? We need to think different. The Bible says that these men of faith, you need to take time for yourself and study this chapter. These men of faith, the Bible says that they will function with the consciousness that this world was, was not their own, that they were strangers on the earth. That's what they thought. And the Bible says God was not ashamed to be called their God. He was not ashamed. Man looked at the riches in Pharaoh's house and he looked at the word of God. He saw that those riches were for a moment. Look at it. He says that esteeming the reproach of Christ, he chose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season by faith. Look at verse. 27. He said, by faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured him. Endured as seeing him who is invisible. Remember when God spoke to Moses? And he said, go and bring my people back. He said, I've heard the cry of my people in Israel. I've seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. He said, I'm sending you. Go and deliver my people. Of course, he, he said, God, if I go, and I say to them, and I, and I say to Pharaoh, let my people go. If they ask me, who am I going to say, send me? Of course, God said, you know, who I am. Say, I am that I am. But see, God said to Moses when he sent him, he said, I'll be with you. So Moses now is standing before Pharaoh. And he said, God said, let my people go. But the secret here is that this man had a consciousness that God was with him. Even though he could not see him with his physical eyes. He left with an understanding that God was with him. And he shook the economy of Egypt. Miracle after miracle. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 11. I mean verse 32. Hallelujah. He says, And what shall, what shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, and of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms and wrote righteousness and obtained promises and stopped the mouth of lions. He says, this man through faith, they subdued kingdoms, 
wrought righteousness, obtained promises. Stop the mouth of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, those that were weak, he said, out of weakness were made strong. Faith makes you strong. Works valiant in fight. Time to flight the armies of variants. Look at verse 35. Women raise their dead. Women receive their dead raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. That they might obtain a better resurrection. Remember, when Peter was arrested in the book of Acts chapter 12. Okay? The angel came and opened the prison door and brought him out. Okay? You look at Paul. But when, it, you know, Paul the apostle, many times they wanted to kill him. They couldn't. In one place, they took, put him in the bucket, basket and lowered him down on the wall. Paul told us, he said that he chose, he looked at life and he looked at the impact he was going to have on the lives of the people. He said he chose to live so he can be a blessing, so he can advance the kingdom. He had a choice. But when he was through here on earth, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course and I've kept the faith. He said, now a crown of righteousness awaits me. This man now was, was ready to go. So, which means this man, they had charge, you see, they had exercised dominion over their circumstances by faith. That's what the word of God is showing us here. That they subdued kingdoms. They wrote righteousness. They worked righteousness. They obtained promises. The promises that were given to them in the word of God. He said, by faith, they took a hold of them. The enemy did not die. Women received their day raised back to life. They were not worthy to live in this world. They showed them up. In the book of Acts, the Bible says that when the apostles showed up, people in the, in, in, in the, the people in the city, they testified, they said, these men that have turned the world upside down, he said they have come here too. They have come here too. They shoot this world. People die and they brought them back to life by faith. You obtain promises. See, those that were weak, they became strong. Why am I showing you this, these things? Go to the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Why are we learning about this? Why is God telling us? Giving us Hebrews, chapter 11. The New King James, look at it. He said, For whatsoever things were written afore time, the, the New King James, he says, before. He says, We are written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. He said, Whatever was written in the scriptures before, he says, they were written for our learning, for us to learn. So that we through patience, the Amplified says, through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope and overflow with confidence in the promises. So what do you learn from the lives of these men and women? Because the word of God says they were given to us for our learning. What do you learn? The Bible tells us God was not ashamed to be called their God. He was not ashamed. So what do we learn from these men and women? They raised the dead. They left this world alive. They refused to die. They put them in the dungeon. The lions could not swallow them. The lions looked at them. 
and they shut their mouth. Hey, hey, praise God. Hallelujah. If you will learn to walk by faith, you will shake this world. So what do we learn? God wants us to know what they did with their faith to help get an idea of what we can do with our faith. That's it. What they did with their faith to get an idea of what we can do with our faith. He wants us to know that by faith we can go beyond the limits that have been placed on you by your family, by your school, by your workplace. You can go beyond the limitations of this world. You can do the impossible. You can do the impossible. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, let me, let me give you a scripture. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. The King James. Look at this. He said, that ye be not thrustful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. He said, not slothful. Now question, what does the word slothful mean? What does it mean? Slow. He says, be not thrustful, that ye be ye not thrustful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. What does it mean? That we should not be thrustful. But we should be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Followers of them. Followers of them. I was just reading for you. Who through faith and patience. He said the Bible says they were inherited promises. Yeah. Hallelujah. They received the promises. So, what does the word thrustful mean? The word thrustful is translated from the Greek word nothros. Okay? Which means, in English, sluggish, lazy, stupid, dumb. That's what the word means. So, God is saying, He is telling us not to be sluggish, not to be lazy, not to be dumb, not to be stupid. He doesn't want you to be that way. Somebody said, I have problems. I think I will not succeed. My father died. He didn't leave me an inheritance. God doesn't want you to be sluggish. He doesn't want you to be lazy. He doesn't want you to be stupid. Praise the Lord. He said, but follow us. He said, not thrustful. Look, look at the scripture again. He says, that, that ye be not thrustful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. He said, don't be lazy. Don't be thrustful. He said, but followers. What does the word follower mean? It doesn't mean to follow someone physically around. The word in the Greek is mamites, which means imitators. Amen. Amen. Which means to copy them. We are to copy those men and act like them. Amen, brother. Be imitators of them. Yes. He said, don't be sluggish. He said, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherited the promises. I like how the message translation puts it. I might give it that to us. Let me use, use a, a, a couple of a newer versions here so you can see something. The, new, the message translation says this. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. He says, stop it. Look at this, the last part. Okay? The last part. He said, don't drag your feet. Be like those who stay the course with committed faith and then get everything promised to them. That's what the Bible says. He said, don't drag your feet. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Look up. He says, <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So, <laughs> I received the seed. God bless you. Amen. So, listen to this. He says, 
Don't drag your feet. Be like those who stay the course with committed faith. He says, those with committed faith, he says, they get the promises. They get everything promised to them. Hebrews chapter 6. Give, give us the, new, the, the, the good news translation. Baby. The good news translation. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He says, we don't want you to, be, to become lazy, but to be like those who believe and are patient and so receive what God has promised. He says, be like those who believe. There is, there is, patience is a virtue, by the way. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a virtue. Give me the, the Amplified, the classic edition. That we need to learn to be patient. Have committed faith. Be patient. The Amplified says, in order that you may not grow disinterested and become spiritually sluggers, but imitators, behaving as those who through faith. Do you see that? That we have to behave like those who through faith by, by their leaning on their entire personality on God in Christ in absolute trust and confidence. In his power and wisdom and goodness. He says their entire personality was leaning on God in Christ. This is so big. He says so that you don't grow disinterested to lose the passion, to lose the desire, to give up, to resign to failure. He says be imitators. He said, behave like those that have gone ahead of you. Leaning your, your entire self on the integrity of the word of God. Your entire personality in Christ in absolute confidence and trust in his power, in his wisdom, in his goodness. And he says, by practicing or by practice of patience, Precious endurance and waiting and now inheriting the promises. God, you see, let me tell you something. One of the reasons God gave you your mind is to be able to picture your future. I've said this to you before. Your mind is so important. That it's more important, it's more important than your friends, your family, your brothers, your sisters, even your mother and brother and, and, and father. Because if you can't take care of your mind, you can't help anybody. You can't even help yourself. You see that? You can't be a blessing to even those around you. And God is aware of that. He knows that if your mind does not have a picture of the future, of success, a portrait of your victories, it keeps replaying the painful memories of the past. You see? He knows. And you can't change the past. You can't change what happened in the past. You can't change the mistakes you did. But you can change the future. So he gives you a picture of the future. Examples of men and women that were ordinary. Confronted with the challenges and difficulties that you were confronted with. But irrespective of that, they lived a triumphant life. They did. So he tells you to follow their example and the principles they embraced to run right in their generation. And if you do, you'll live above the challenges of this world. Praise God. Amen. Why? Well, the Bible says that when you read the Amplified, he says, be imitators of those who through faith lean on God with absolute trust and confidence in him and his power by patience and words. Even when suffering. You see? He says, even when suffering, which means you don't give up. You stay committed. Committed faith. Even when suffering. You, you want to give that to us, really? Just want to show you that word. Amen. Oh, Rabba Kapreti Shikariyata. Thank you, Lord. Look at that. 
absolute trust and confidence in him and in his power. And by patient endurance, even when suffering, glory to God. Suffering is not an excuse. Glory to God. Why? Because you will receive the promise. If you stay committed, glory to God. The word of God is so important. God made us. We were made from God's word. Our physical bodies came from the dust of the ground. Okay? So they must remain connected to the dust of the ground. Remember the account of creation. Book of Genesis chapter, you may quickly, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. I want to show you something here. See. Remember the account of creation, how man came into being. The Bible says, And the Lord God formed the man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So, man, man's physical body came from the dust. So, his body must remain connected to the ground. Every living thing must remain connected with source. Plants came from the ground. Therefore, they must remain connected to the ground. They can't live in the air. The fish came from the water. They live in the water. They can't live on the ground. So your human spirit came from God. From God's spirit. And therefore, must remain connected to God's spirit. And when you remain connected to the Spirit of God, you live a triumphant life. You live a triumphant life. The triumphant life, listen to this, the triumphant life belongs to every one of us. I'll say that again. The triumphant life belongs to every one of us. But to enjoy it, you must first believe that there is such a life and then you follow the principles of that life. You have to first believe. Do you know there are people who don't believe that there is a triumphant life? That they can live by above the limitations of this world. They can dominate their circumstances. They can change this world. Because nobody ever told them. So the triumphant life belongs to every one of us. But you have to first believe that there is such a life and begin to follow the principles of that life. And the first and foremost principle you've got to follow is the faith principle. It's the faith principle. And we discovered from studying God's word that faith is even more than a principle. It's a law. It's a law that you must follow if you're going to live a triumphant life. Remember, I showed you Romans 3 verse 27 that faith is a law. And the Bible tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Which means, without faith, you can't please God. Without faith, you can't walk with God. Without faith, you can't make progress in the realm of the Spirit. Without faith, you can't accomplish or achieve anything worthwhile. You can't. Remember, Jesus said to us in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, that if you have faith, Faith as a grain of a mustard seed. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Jesus never lied to anybody. He meant what he said. And he said what he meant. He said in Matthew 17 verse 20, If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, He said nothing shall be impossible unto you. I would like to remind you of another statement that Jesus made. It was very clear and precise. And that's Mark chapter 9, verse 23. He said, Jesus said, If thou canst believe. These words are so important. Look at it. He said, If thou canst believe, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. He said, All things are possible to him who believes. What do you believe? The what? 
He said, all things are possible to him that believes. What do you believe? The word. The word. Romans 10 verse 10 says, with the heart, man believes. So you believe with your heart. You believe with your heart. You believe with your heart. So, what does the word say? What does the word say? He says, if you can believe, all things are possible. Your spirit is it. That's the word. The word is the only thing that rules in the realm of the supernatural. That's what that rules in the realm of the supernatural. The possibilities, your spirit has the capacity for unlimited possibilities, infinite possibilities. So the possibilities are endless. So, what do you believe? The word. What does the word say? I'm going to show you, just share with you quickly a few scriptures. First John chapter 5, verse 4. This is a reminder. But you can write this, this down. First John chapter 5, verse 4. He said, For whatsoever is born of God, which means anybody that is born of God, overcometh the world. The Bible did say he's going to overcome. Overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Romans 8, verse 2. Thirty-seven. Romans eight verse thirty-seven. Look at it for yourself. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. He says, "Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world." He says, "In all these things we are more than conquerors." Philippians four verse thirteen. Philippians 4 verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Ephesians 1 verse 3, King James. Look at it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Remember, if he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings, it means he has automatically blessed us with all physical blessings. Because the physical blessings, the physical came out of the spiritual. Which means that the lesser is included in the greater. So if he blessed, if he has already noticed, he did not say he's going to bless us. He said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. He has already. It's past tense. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The physical came out of the spiritual. Remember, he says, Through faith we understand the wows were framed by the word of God. The wows were constructed by the word of God. And the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So, this world came out spiritual. See, that's why I know I say to you, life is spiritual. A human life is controlled in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. First John chapter 4 verse 4. King James. Look at him. He says, Ye are of God, they are children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He says, You have overcome them. He did not say you are going to overcome. Ye have overcome them. The agents of the Antichrist, you have overcome them. All the forces of wickedness, you have overcome them. The cause of darkness, you have overcome. He says, Because greater is he that is in you. That he that is in the world. Isaiah 54, verse 17. Isaiah 54, verse 17. Look at it. He says, No weapon that is formed against thee 
shall prosper. And every time the rise against thee, in judgment thou shalt contain. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and in their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. These scriptures give you a mindset. I'm telling you, even as I'm sharing the word of God right now, it is working on you. They give you a mindset. When you're confronted in whichever area, you don't see yourself as a victim, but a victor. Praise the Lord. So the question, do you believe these things? Do you believe them? Do you believe these things? Jesus said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. If you believe these things, I want you to turn to the person next to you and say this. Alright? Say anything is possible. Anything is possible. Say it. Anything is possible. Say it again. Anything is possible. I want you to say it so it gets in your consciousness. Amen. Leaving no room for doubt, fear, and discouragement. Go ahead and say it three times. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Now I want you to say it this time and mean it from the bottom of your heart. Go ahead. Anything, Anything is, is possible. possible. Now say this. Say I'm going. I'm going to have a great life. I'm going to have a great life. Say I'm going to have a great life. I'm going to have a great life. And say this. I will live free of sickness. I will live free of sickness. Free of infirmity. Free of infirmity. And live prosperously in Christ Jesus. And live prosperously in Christ Jesus. Do you believe that? Yes. Now it's important that you make your faith proclamations about your life. Amen. Amen. If you don't if you don't say anything, something will happen. Something will still happen. The trouble is that what will happen is what you don't want. Mm. <laughs> Praise God. It's what you don't want that will happen if you don't say anything. I, I want to make another statement similar to what I've just said. If you had a garden and you don't sow any seed in your garden, you don't plant anything, something will still grow. What are you going to have? Weeds. The lives of many Christians are like that. They don't realize that they have something to do about their lives. They think that whatever will be, will be. And the only thing that will be are the things they don't want. Because it's not God's responsibility to do something about your life. He's already done something about your life by sending Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So it's our responsibility to do something with what he has given us to us. Amen? So you must say that you're going to live a great life. Amen. You must say it. If you're going to have it, you must say it. Praise the Lord. Sickness comes to those who don't say that they will continue to live in health. Those who do not continue to proclaim divine health are the ones that welcome sickness. Sickness comes to them. It has to come to them. They are like the weeds growing in the garden. And they may say, but I didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. It's like the man who didn't sow anything in the garden. You hear what I'm saying? He didn't sow anything. He said to himself, I didn't sow the wrong seeds. Where are these coming from? If you had sown the right thing, you would have the right Results, but you refuse to sow the right things, so they will come from the ground. Why? Because according to the law of God, 
plants were commanded to come out of the ground. You read that in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 11. So if you don't do anything, if you don't say anything, something will still happen. Something will still happen. Show you a scripture last time, book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. He says, we have in the same spirit of faith as it is written. I believe that therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. It is our law. That's the law of faith. Faith speaks. Hallelujah. You are refusing arthritis. You don't want arthritis in your body. No strokes. No chest pain. No headaches. No migraines, no diabetes, no heart trouble, no blood infection. Right. You will not have any of them. I it. Amen. Amen. Let me show you a principle of the kingdom. I that. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Let me show you the principle of the kingdom. Mark chapter 4, verse 26. Mark chapter 4, verse 26. He says, And the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed in the ground. And then he goes to sleep. That's right, I was going to say that. And then he says, He should sleep. And then rise night and day, and the seed should sprout and grow, and he knoweth not how. We already saw that if you don't sow seed, something will happen. Mm. Praise the Lord. Mm. So he's showing you here the principle of the kingdom. If you don't sow, something will happen. The challenge is what will happen or what will grow is something you don't want. What will manifest is something you don't want. So he's giving us a principle here. He says the kingdom of God is as if a man that scatters seed on the ground. Then he goes to sleep. He sleeps at night. Day. Then he wakes up. And then he finds the seed has grown. But he doesn't know how. He was, his responsibility was to sow. What does the Bible tell us that the seed is? The word. The word. Yeah. Look at it. Uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 11. He says the seed is the word of God. So he lets us know what the seed is. Look at it. Now this is the parable. The parable says the seed is the word of God. The word of God in your mouth. So important. The seed is the word. Hallelujah. And now, the, the word that he lets us know that the word of God is alive. The word of God is full of power. The word of God is active. The word of God has divine energy. So the word energizes. The word is effective. It works. Give me that scripture. Uh, book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. They amplify the classic. It says the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. Look at it for yourself. For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power. It says it is full of power. Making it operative. The word is active. The word is alive. The word is full of power, operative, energizing, and effective. The word is alive. The word is full of power. The word is active. The word is effective. Hallelujah. Then he, he, he lets us know in Luke chapter 1 verse 37, he tells us that the word is impossible of fulfillment. 
<laughs> Luke 1 verse 37. Give, give it to us the Amplified. The, he tells us the word is impossible of fulfillment. Which means, in other words, the word does not fail. He does not fail. Look at it for yourself. For without God, for with God nothing is ever impossible. And no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. What is he telling you? The word does not fail. The word comes to pass. If you lay a hold of the word by faith, the word will come to pass. That's what happened to the apostles. That's what happened to those that went ahead of us. They received the promise. So God is telling us to follow in their footsteps. Lastly, Jesus said something. In Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Let's look at it. Mark 11, verse 23. 22, actually. 23. This is what it says. Let's read this together. Amen? Go ahead. One, two, three, go. Jesus answering, said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. He shall have whatsoever he saith. He says, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And he, he does not doubt in his heart, but believes that all things that he says will come to pass. Amen. You don't say to believe, you believe. He says, have faith in God. That's what Jesus said. What he's saying there is have the God kind of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for today. Amen. We thank you for this message that you have given to us. The message of faith. We are stirred by your spirit. We are hold, we lay a hold of your word, Lord. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. I pray that what I have shared with your children will be driven from their minds into their spirit. That they take a hold of your word. Walk in boldness with their head high. Fulfilling the core and purpose for which you created them. And nothing shall be possible unto them because they believe. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.